to go? Yeah, we're good to go. We can go and create our own history. And that's something that really takes my, my fancy. Uh, I like the fact that we can go and mould the club, mould our identity as a team, togetherness. That's my biggest word, always. Um, that there'll be some hard work involved during the, the pre-season and we'll go into the, into the, the regular season with uh, full of optimism. Welcome back. We are continuing our MLS season previews. Today we're focusing on Charlotte FC, who in 2023, they finished ninth in the Eastern Conference, made the postseason for the first time in club history, having missed out in their inaugural season, uh, but they ended up getting pummeled by the Red Bulls 5-2 in that wild card play-in game. They fired head coach Christian Latanzio at the end of the season and hired Dean Smith, whose last managerial position was at Leicester last season when they got relegated with eight matches left. He's previously been at Aston Villa, and Norwich were also relegated when he was in charge. I'm, I'm, I'm not. I'm not saying. I'm, good thing there's no relegation. There's no fear of that right in now. In MLS, yeah, he just got. He's got nothing. Nothing to worry about. Imagine he does get relegated. He'd be like, how the hell did that? Happen? I know. So I, it, Charlotte's an interesting one because I feel like in their first two years in the league, they haven't really established an identity yet. Um, it, it's. It's. You don't really know what you're going to get with them, and then. Their leading goal scorer, Carol Swiderski, is gone. Uh, Jowziak is the, the other DP. He's gone. And it feels like this is just, I mean, they're, they're starting entirely from scratch, Tony, and, and especially with this hire of, of Dean Smith. What are your expectations for them in 2023? Um, or 24, sorry. Yeah, 24. The, I'm not quite sure what to think of this team. I am really impressed. Uh, I've seen three or four interviews with uh, Dean Smith, and I'm really impressed with his knowledge of the league. Mm -hmm. Right? It almost, it almost seems like he was preparing at some point to be in Major League Soccer with all the work that he's done to get ready. Um, with regards to style, I, I think we thought this was going to be sort of an Eastern European type of team. You know, gritty, run in lanes, and be tough to play against, and have decently technical players. You mentioned Joe Zviak came in, didn't get the job done. Um, Carol Shvidersky, uh, sorry. He was supposed to be the number nine. He was supposed to be the goal scorer. They used him as a 10. They used him as a right winger. They used him in the midfield. So I don't think in Charlotte they knew what they were trying to be. Christian Latancia was kind of thrown into that when uh, Miguel Angel Ramirez was oh. just let go a couple games into the season. So it's been a little bit of a mess. The one thing that's been a constant, their fan base is unbelievable. Yeah. They're just crying out for, like, we need to win. Like, we want to fill this stadium and, mm -hmm. and win something. And maybe Dean Smith can be the guy that can bring that to them. And I was there last year for their match against Inter-Miami. It was an absolute electric stadium. And, and in, from what I heard from a lot of uh, a lot of the folks that work for the team and whatnot, yes, it was more filled. The top bowl was a little bit more filled. You can see it here in the photo behind us just how filled it that is almost exactly this. In fact, might be from that match if I'm not mistaken. Um, but they said yes. While it's normally not this full, it's always this loud. And the twelfth, their twelfth man is the one man you cannot lose if you're Charlotte. So there's a lot that's going to be riding on on Dean Smith and his ability to get this team going. I mean, you look at some of their key signings. Jabril Diani is that. Is that is that the guy that's going to make a, a, a big a big um, move for you? You can see him. He came from Khan. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. I believe Nico? it is Khan. Chan. League two. C A E N. Okay, Nico's broken. We'll we'll plug him in <laughs> in the break. I, I think that's. Uh, uh, we, we got it. <laughs> we got it. Wow, wow, we stumped him. No, stump and you think this guy's the best at Europa? <laughs> uh, we, you look at some of the departures. You mentioned Swiderski, who's someone who you know you can lead on at times as a, as a as a forward and a striker to maybe try to make something happen. But there's so many question marks around this team. How are they going to play? What's the style going to be? Are they going to be attractive? Are they going to be rudimentary? It's just really difficult to pinpoint point what's going to happen it's almost like ask me mid-season and I'll tell you more um I was completely disappointed with Enzo Copetti last season for Charlotte who was mm -hmm. brought on to be one of the guys if not the guy and I feel like you kind of get that sometimes when you pluck out of Argentina that their game and their how prolific they are in Argentina doesn't necessarily translate. Yeah. Could be the case with Cocado. You never know. What I'm telling you is that Cocado for Montreal is a good get because in Argentina he was good. I said the same thing about Charlotte within Socopetti because for Racing he was unbelievable. How much do you think it affects the, the, the cultural dichotomy between 
a player like Enzo Copetti, who is so Argentine, and a manager like Dean Smith, who's so English. And that combination, historically in football, and in other places, yeah, yeah. hasn't hasn't really boded the best but results. I think English managers, when you think about the rest of the world, like they have more of those relationships than than most. If you're a French manager in France, you know generally where your players are coming from. All speaks French at the lower levels. You know, you talk about uh, Premier League managers. Um, Championship managers, you look at their rosters, they have cultures from all over the world because they're buying players from everywhere, you know. I don't think it's as much of a difference, the relationship between the manager and the player. For me, a lot of times, it's how quickly the player adapts to the new environment, mm -hmm. right? And sometimes guys just take longer. I mean, everybody is different, right? A little bit uncomfortable. Who knows? Did the guy's family come or did they not come? And, you know, or were they stuck getting, you know, having visa issues? There's all of these things that happen for players when you move to a different country that sometimes we don't necessarily think of, but they're human issues that they deal with on a daily basis. So, the, I, I guess the bottom line is for Copetti, they're expecting more out of him. Yep. They're expecting him to be one of those 12 to 15 goal scorers throughout this season. Mm -hmm. If you, it's kind of a, a question for for the group. If you knowing knowing MLS uh, the way we do, if you're if you're a new manager and you're coming over and you're not super familiar with with the league and you are tasked with kind of building your roster and you've got these four DP slots that you can where are you where are you utilizing your your DP slots because I'm looking at Charlotte right up the and I'm like, yeah. I don't know. There's there doesn't seem to be like that that difference maker, you know. And I'm and I'm wondering what, where is that position? Where where would you invest in? First and foremost for me is the number ten, dynamic midfielder is something that traditionally we've had a mm -hmm. little bit of trouble building in America, especially someone who just can kind of be that metronome within the middle of the pitch and just mm -hmm. kind of control the match, make make maybe some creative moves, but for the most creative passes, that's where I would drop the majority of my money if I had it. When they originally conceptualized Tam and Gam, it was to build that midfield. They wanted stop buying the, the highlight striker and stop buying the old defender, mm -hmm. buy someone in the middle of the pitch, and, and that's where I would spend most of my money. Tony, do you agree? Yeah, look, they're strong in goal with Kalina, right? And you have potentially a, a goal scoring number nine. We'll see how that turns out. Uh, so you need the piece, but in, in general, Susanna, I would answer the question by saying anywhere up the middle of the field, wherever you think you need Need to fill holes you got that the spine of your team has to be strong and, yeah. and then you can fill pieces around right in this league so I look the, the names here you look at our field in the middle of the field Diani's going to play it looks like in the midfield Westwood's got so much experience it's not bad on paper we'll just have to see what it looks like under Dean Smith because we really don't know